On the south coast of England, at the edge of the New Forest National Park, is a remarkable stretch of coastline. From Hurst Castle to Southampton Water lies a 26-mile-long narrow ribbon of precious salt marsh, mudflat and grazing marsh. Hemmed into the east and west by urbanization and industrial expansion and threatened by rising sea levels, it's of international importance to wildlife. In autumn, Tens of thousands of birds fly in to escape the frozen north. Around 25,000 Brent geese, 10% of the global population, arrive from northern Russia to overwinter across the Soviet. Many waders and ducks also arrive, flocks of Dunlin from northwest Europe and black-tailed godwits from Iceland. Ducks, including the shoveler, pintail, teal, and widgeon, join the throng. As the tide retreats, the mudflats and foreshore are exposed, and with it, the winter feast the birds have come for. Eelgrass, shellfish, worms, and crustaceans are all on the menu. The birds have just a short window to feed before the tide comes back in or night falls. They must feed quickly and stay in tip-top condition if they're to survive the cold, wet and windy weather. We can all help the birds in winter by staying on the main tracks and keeping our dogs close. A dog on the foreshore can cause mass panic and cost them valuable energy and feeding time. When spring comes, new visitors arrive. Thousands of black-headed gulls start nesting. Common and sandwich toads fly in from Africa. And ring plovers and oyster catchers look for remote beaches to lay their eggs. Although at risk from unusually high tides, storms and larger gulls, the salt marsh islands just offshore are at least safe from hungry foxes. To minimize human disturbance to the birds, no one is allowed on these islands, and kayakers and kite surfers should keep their distance. If adults are scared from their nests, the eggs can chill and the young may starve. Further inshore, the skylark and lapwing display above their breeding territories. They also nest on the ground, but here they're much more exposed to foxes and crows. They must sit tight to protect their eggs. They get used to busy footpaths, but are easily disturbed by walkers or dogs that stray from the main routes. A wandering dog can force birds from their nest leaving the eggs dangerously exposed to the weather and the ever-watchful predators. We can and should all enjoy this special place and admire how these precious birds live on the edge of life, coping with the tides, predators and our changing weather. Whatever the time of year, we can help, whether they're feeding along the foreshore or nesting on the ground by staying on the paths, and if necessary, keeping our dogs on the lead. Then they'll stand a much better chance of rearing their young and surviving their epic migration back to Africa or the far north 